This is the Swalk pattern, a brand new pattern for me at Studio 77. Hi and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for popping back to see me. If you're new then welcome. Please do consider hitting that subscribe and the bell button so that you don't miss out on any new tutorials. On this video we're going to be going over the Swalk bag. This is a great beginner pattern or intermediate. You can change it up to make it suit your techniques and styles. This pattern was originally part of the 12 days of bag making box. Hello if you are watching because of that box, thank you so much for purchasing. You can find out more about that in the link in the description below. So this pattern has got a few little features. We have got a pocket on the back so you can slip your phone in there for easy access when you're out and about. We have also on the front, this is the more advanced version. There is also the more beginner friendly version. We still have the pocket on the back of the beginner version. You can choose to leave that out if you want to, if you want to make it a really quick and easier bag. On the front, I will pop the other one down for a second. On the front, we have this envelope style. So I've designed this to look like an envelope. So you can add different hacks. I've seen people make it into a Harry Potter envelope. You can add little embellishments to the front. You can add kisses, hearts. You can make it into a Valentine's Day bag. There are so many possibilities. So when you open it up, you have, of course, the main pouch. You could, again, add a zipper in there if you're a bit more advanced and not a beginner but it's really simple if you wanna leave it out. In, in the front, you've also got this added little sneaky extra hidden pocket, which is quite sweet. So you can fit little uh, bits and pieces in there if you want to too. We've got a magnetic closure on the front and we've got these strap connectors on the side. You could just put in one if you wanted to and make it into a wristlet. For the more advanced style of bag, we have got these overlays that go over the top and you're gonna to want to make those out of a cork or faux leather because obviously they have got a raw edge. If at any point of this tutorial you have any comments, questions or queries or just want to say hello, do pop them in the comments box below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to cut out all your pattern pieces as per the cutting chart in the instructions. You're also, as part of that, you're going to be cutting out your strap as well. And it's worth noting that the cork included in the 12 days of bag making box, if you are following along with that, is a certain width and that width is slightly shorter than the length of the strap mentioned in the instructions. It's totally up to you whether you use another piece of cork but honestly you're only going to be leaving out a couple of inches and in my view it's it's totally fine it's not going to make a huge amount of difference to your strap. Also going to want to gather your hardware again this is included in the box but if you haven't got the box you're going to want two three quarter inch D-rings, two lobster clasps, which are one inch, and a slider, which is one inch as well. You're also going to want your zipper tape and your pull, attach your pull onto your zipper tape. And you're going to want to make sure everything is interfaced. You're also going to want to have cut out your two Decaville light pieces so that they are prepped and ready to go. You're also going to be want to using your usual supplies. So we're definitely going to be using some double sided quilters sewing tape. You're going to want a couple of pairs of scissors. I always use a large pair and a small pair. You're going to want a friction pen or something similar that's erasable. You're going to want to have some clips because we're using cork. You're going to want some regular pins for sewing with the cotton, a lighter, I often have larger pins on hand as well for pulling through threads and if you want to make a mark for uh, stopping and starting your sewing, I'll show you that when we get to it. There's optional rivets as well if you want to use rivets on your strap. You're also going to need an 18mm magnetic snap. You're also going to want to choose which option you are going to do. Now option B is slightly trickier, but don't let it put you off. If you want to go for it, I always say then 
give it a go and just go slow and follow along with this video or with the instructions. So for option B, you're going to want to also cut out these two overlays and you're going to want to cut these out of a fabric that doesn't fray because we are sealing the edges and we are not tucking them under. So we're going to start off with making our strap and as you can see, I've already drawn a line right down the middle. So you're going to want to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to place our double sided tape down the middle. Now, if you don't have double sided tape, it's totally fine to just clip it or do the next step, as I'm going to show you, into the middle. This just makes it a little bit easier and a little bit more accurate. So if you've got some, I highly recommend it. Then we're going to fold each end into the middle and meet on that line. It's quite a good idea to use a black pen for this. You're never going to see it, so it doesn't matter if it's not a friction pen uh, because it's easier to see through the tape. And we're just going to clip that in place as we go. Now you can either clip all the way along the strap or at the same time you can fold it again to meet those two edges and clip that in place as you go. Okay, so now that's all clipped together, I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew along each edge. Now it's worth noting that when you're doing straps like this, you should always start on the same end. This is going to help stop your strap from twisting and curling. Also, I'm using a walking foot and I'm going to do this on a four stitch length. It gives a slightly more professional cohesive look. Also, it's a little bit less damaging to the cork that we're going through. You should always use a slightly long, longer stitch with cork or faux leather because it doesn't perforate the fabric as much. Okay, so now that that's stitched, we are going to add on our swivel clips and our slider. So you want to put the at one end of the strap through the slider and over the middle part, like so. Now you can either put in a couple of rivets there or you can sew a box with a cross in the middle and I call that a barn door. Okay, so I'm gonna clip that in place. Okay, so now that is stitched, we're gonna go ahead to the other end and we're gonna place on our lobster clasp and you wanna place it on so that the main part of the lobster clasp is on the outside of that loop. Okay, so I'm gonna go through. So it's gonna look like this. Then we're gonna thread it through our slider like so. And then we've got this raw end, we're going to put the other lobster clasp on, fold it over. And again, we're going to leave about an inch and a half. We're going to clip it in place. And then we're going to stitch again our barn door, or you could use a couple of rivets as well. Our strap is complete and we're going to put that to one side. Okay, so next we're going to move on to our strap connectors. Now you will have cut out one piece. You can either cut it in half like I have done here before you sew or you can do these next steps all together and cut it after you've stitched it. Okay, so you're going to want to draw a line down the center like I have here and we're just going to put some double-sided tape in the middle exactly the same as how we made the strap. And you're going to want to fold each long side into the middle to meet. And I'm just going to pop a couple of clips on there. Then I'm going to take it over to the machine and I'm going to top stitch along each long edge to keep those nice and secure. Then we're going to pop them onto the D-rings. 
and pop the clip to keep them together. Then we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to sew as close as we can using a zipper foot as close as we can to that D-ring. Okay, then we're going to pop those strap connectors to one side and we're going to move along to the back of the bag. Next we're going to move along to the back of the bag and to do that we're going to need pattern piece one both the outer and the inner or the, the lining and we're going to need pattern piece two as well same outer and the lining. Also going to of course need our zipper. So we're going to start with pattern piece one and we're going to grab our zipper and we're going to use our trusty double sided tape and we're going to place the tape all the way along the edge of the zipper. Then we're going to lay our outer piece right side down to the zipper and then we're going to baste along that edge within the seam allowance. Now it's worth noting that on these pieces for the zipper it is a quarter inch seam allowance but that everything else is three eighths of an inch or one centimetre. Okay so it's about an eighth of an inch or a few millimetres from that edge. Now you may notice as you're watching this that the zipper foot is looking a little bit strange because the needle should be on the other side of the zipper foot so I don't know what happened there <laughs> um, but you obviously you can sew that way but usually you sew with the needle on the other side of the foot. Okay so I have basted that down now it's worth noting as well you may want to baste the ends of your zipper closed just so that you can't pull the zipper off. You can also add a clip on the end as well just to make sure that you can't physically pull the zipper off as well. Also, you may want to, like I have here, feed the teeth back into the zipper, okay? You wanna make sure that the, the zipper teeth are nicely lined up and then just feed those teeth back into each other to close it and that just makes it a little bit easier when you come to construct the rest of the bag. So then we're gonna get our lining piece, which for me is the navy. And we're going to use our double sided tape again and we're going to place that along that edge. Using the double sided tape means that the zip doesn't shift around which is really easy for it to do and it makes life a huge amount easier. You don't have to use double sided tape if you don't want to but I do recommend it because making your life easier is always a good thing. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance along that edge. Okay, so now that's stitched, we're going to pull that open. And what it says in the pattern now is to top stitch along that zipper edge. But I'm actually going to hold off on that for just a minute. Because we're changing our feet to do that, I'm going to go ahead and do the next step and then come back and do the top stitching at the same time. So we're going to move along and we're going to grab our pattern piece two and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to pop my clips back on the end of my zipper so I don't pull off my zipper. Okay, so now we're up to the same speed on this side as well. We're going to pop our clips on the, we've opened it out and I'm going to pop the clips on the other side. And it's worth noting as well that when you're doing this, you want to make sure that the zipper is closing at the top of the bag. If you have it at the bottom, it may not be as useful because the zipper may open and things fall out as you open it, if that makes sense. So we're doing it so that the zipper pull closes at the top. That's important if you've got a directional fabric. Now we've clipped that open, we're then going to top stitch an eighth of an inch or a few millimetre from each edge along that zipper. So 
now that's sewn we're going to lay that on top of pattern piece six and pattern piece six needs to be right side up and the piece we've just sewn needs to be wrong side down so the lining is matching the lining okay and then we're going to clip and baste within the seam allowance all the way around the edge If you have any excess overhanging like I do, you can also trim that down if you want to at this stage. Okay, then we're going to move that to one side and we're going to start work on the front panel. So we're going to grab our two pattern piece fives and we're going to lay them right sides together. Okay, and then we're going to sew along that top edge. So you're going to want to sew in a little bit down along that seam along that bottom edge up and across and of course we're using our one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance now that's sewn i have just snipped into those corners to help it for turning out so i have cut out two little triangles there and a triangle at each top edge of those corners and we want to make sure we don't snip into the stitches that is going to help it when we turn it out, which we're going to do now. So I'm just going to turn it so that it is wrong sides together. And we're going to give that a little press to keep that in place. Then we're going to open up the two layers and we're going to place our decaville that we cut out and we're going to place that in between the seam allowance. We're going to butt it right up against that edge of the seam. And we're opening up the seam allowance so that we have a little bit less bulk. And the reason why we put it either side of the decaville and not underneath the decaville completely is to also help with a little bit of that bulk. It just disperses it a bit. If we put the decaville on top of both layers, we're going to have a bigger step. So just keep tweaking that. This is why it's important to do it with the right seam allowance along that edge and then we're going to press that in place so now that the decaville light is adhered i've adhered it by the way to the front piece because we are using this hashtag on the outside and we're then going to top stitch one eighth of an inch or a few millimeters from that edge Okay, so we're going to put that to one side and we're going to carry on with the front triangle, which is the bottom triangle. Okay, so you've got your two pieces and this, these are pattern piece four. We've got the outer and the lining and we're going to place them right sides together. Then we're going to sew around the three sides, one centimetre or three eighths of an inch from the edge. Then, just like we did before, we're going to cut out those corners to make it easier for turning. This time we can take out quite a big chunk of those corners. That's going to make it a lot easier. Then we're going to turn it the right way out. We're going to push into those corners and we're going to give that a quick press. So if you're doing option A, you're going to go ahead and jump onto the next stage, which is adding in the magnetic snap. If you are doing option B, like I am, we're then going to take our bottom overlay, which is pattern piece eight, and we're going to lay that on top. We're going to use some double sided tape to keep that in place. And then we're going to top stitch along that bottom edge, along the short edge all the way around that middle edge and again against that short edge. We are leaving the outer edge open. Okay, now we're going to move on to adding in our magnetic snap. Now, if you're option A, you're not gonna have this overlay. We are option B, so we do. You want to take your pattern piece and we're going to cut into that cross so i'm going to fold it a little bit and cut it so that we have the correct placement next we're going to lay it on top of 
our piece that we have just sewn and we're going to mark through with a friction pen or some chalk I may need to do chalk oh, I can just about see it so we're going to mark through that cross I'm just going to quickly pop the pin in there because it's very difficult for me to see that is the middle of our magnetic snap and we want to place our female on the bottom okay so you want to push the two prongs either side so that that is centered so that we just make a little dent in the fabric so we can see where we need to cut it's very difficult for you to see on the camera but there are two little prongs there then i'm going to take out that pin and i'm going to just make a hole for those two prongs but i'm only going to make the hole in that top layer okay so we're not going through the lining I'm going to place our magnetic snap through those holes and then we can also pop on some Decaville light a little scrap of Decaville light and the way to do that is just you can use the other side or you can do it before you put that in you just want to make some holes for the prongs again we can pop that on the back then we want to put our washer or our keeper in place open up the prongs make sure we've not caught the edge there and it should lay just shy of that overlay then we're going to grab our piece that we stitched earlier which is the pattern piece five and we're going to lay that bottom triangle over the top and you want to make sure that they are both centered and then i'm going to pop some clips along that bottom edge to hold those two edges together and then we're going to top stitch around that top edge and of course i'm doing option b so i'm going to catch in that overlay and we're stitching about an eighth of an inch or two millimeters from the edge and again I'm using my number four stitch length while at the machine I'm also basting around those three raw edges to keep it all together okay so we've done that we're going to move that to one side and we're going to work on the front flap which is pattern piece three and we're going to need the two pieces the outer and the lining and what we're going to do is we're going to do the overlay for this which is option b so if you're option a you're going to want to skip ahead to the next time stamp which is sewing up the front flap but for option b we're going to grab our overlay which is pattern piece seven and we're going to lay that on top and we're going to lay it with the seam allowance now you may find that you want to just chalk on the seam allowance so that you know where you're laying it and of course as with everything else apart from the zipper it's a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance just like we did before we're going to use double-sided tape now we're putting this on first because otherwise we may have a little bit of trouble with our magnetic snap so it's a slightly different technique to how we did the other triangle. So it's worth bearing that in mind. And then we're going to go ahead and top stitch around that top edge. Okay, just the top edge. So we're going to go along that short edge, down that V and along that short edge again. we're going to move along to sewing up the front flap and this is for both options so we're going to lay the lining over the top and we're going to clip or pin around that edge and then we're going to take it over to the machine and we're going to sew along the short edges and around that bottom v and it's one centimeter or three eighths of an inch from the edge if you have done option b you're going to want to make sure that your seam allowance is really good and not going through the overlay
Then we're going to snip into those corners to keep the extra seam allowance out of those corners. Again, being really careful that you don't snip into your stitches. We're going to turn that the right way out. And we're going to give that a little press from the back. Okay, so now that's nicely pressed, we want to grab our Decaville light that we've got for our front flap and we want to place it with the glue side towards the lining. And again, we want to be putting it right up against that bottom seam and we want to be having it so that the seam allowance from the two pieces are sandwiched either side of the Decaville. Okay, then we're going to fuse that Decaville in place Again, being sure that the glue is towards the lining side. Okay, so now we've got our Decaville in. We then want to place in our magnetic snap. And this is, of course, on the lining side. And we're going to measure one inch up from the bottom. And we're going to make that centred as well. We're going to place our magnetic snap on top and push in so that the two prongs make a little dent. Again, quite tricky to see on the camera, but they are there. And then I'm going to cut through to make two little holes. Be sure that you're cutting only through the outer fabric and the Decaville. Super careful with your fingers at this point because it's really easy to slice through as you're pushing those scissors through. You can also pop some fray check on there as well if you like to help keep that nice and secure. Then you want to pop the washer or the keeper on the back. And open out the prongs. Next, we're going to top stitch around that bottom edge. And of course, if you're doing option B, you're gonna to wanna to top stitch through that overlay as well. Now that's top stitch, we're going to just put that to one side for a second and we're gonna grab our back panel. You wanna make sure that the zipper is at the top and we're going to grab our two strap connectors and we're going to place them along the sides and they're going to be one inch down from each edge. And we're going to take that to the machine and we're just going to baste those in place. Then we're going to grab our front piece that we stitched earlier make sure the zipper's clear and we're going to lay that right sides together on top. We're going to clip along those bottom three edges and then we're going to baste within the seam allowance along the two short edges and we're going to stitch the one centimetre seam allowance along that bottom edge to hold it all together and also finish off that bottom seam. Then we're going to grab the front flap that we stitched earlier and we're going to place the two parts of the snap together. I'm going to push it inside. You're going to want to push your zipper pull right out the way. And then we're going to baste along that top edge, making sure that that's really nice and fitted inside. Okay, so that's all stitched together. Then we're going to grab our final lining piece, which is pattern piece six, and we're going to place it right sides down with the back of the front facing up, if that makes sense. So the zipper side is facing down towards the table, and we've got the front, the back of the front facing up. We're going to place that on, we're going to clip it all the way around, and then we're going to stitch around those three edges so the top and the two sides and we're going to stitch along the bottom and we're going to leave about four inches opening at the bottom and this is when i like to use the longer pins just to show where i need to stop carefully 
place them through without going through to the cork. So we're going to sew around there. And this is going to be a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. It's worth noting that when you're sewing this seam, you may want to change over to a chunkier needle you're going through quite a lot of layers when it comes to those strap connectors so i am using a number 110 jeans needle for this to go through all those layers you can also use a hump jumper as well and you can also just hand crank the machine over those areas don't go too fast your machine may not be able to go through all those layers on its own so just take it easy over those areas Okay, so now that's sewn, we're just going to chop off those little sort of ends, those little dog ears. And you want to cut off the corners so that they are out of the seams. Then we're going to reach through and we're going to turn the bag. Now this is the super fiddly bit. If you haven't made a bag before, then this can be a little bit of a fight, but just trust the process. It will go through that hole. Okay, so when you've got it to this stage where you have got the inside facing out, so this is all our lining side, we want to close that turning hole. Okay, so we're gonna fold in that raw edge along the edge of that seam. And we're going to pin and then hand stitch along that edge. Now, there's different ways you can hand stitch it. You can either use a baseball stitch, which is where you go in one side and then in the other, or a ladder stitch, it's sometimes called, and you go sort of in all the way along. Can be called a baseball stitch. Or, or you can whip over the edge, what I call whipping over the edge, where you hand uh, stitch it so that it's sort of a loop going through or you can just do a simple running stitch or a back stitch totally up to you I am going to do a baseball stitch or a ladder stitch so here's how I do my ladder stitch I go in one side and along And then I go in the other side and along. And then when you pull it taut, it disappears. And then you just carry on in the same manner all the way along. It's worth noting as well that we don't need to be going through all the layers. Definitely don't want to be going through the outer layer, but that's going to be quite tricky anyway so you want to be going through the two lining layers and then you just want to cast off at the end my preferred method of casting off is to just do a couple of stitches in the same place and then you want to do another stitch and you want the needle to go through your stitch so you're sort of making a little knot I do that again so you stitch pull it through and then I put my needle in kind of burying it in between pull it out and snip it off close to where the needle came out okay now that's all hand stitched all there is to do is to turn it the right way out so we're going to open up that flap twist the whole bag inside out to finish Okay, so there we go. I've pushed it the right way out, as you can see, and I've pushed out all the corners so that it's really nice and pushed out. You could give this another press if you wanted to as well to help smooth out any lumps and bumps. All there is now to do is to add on our strap and we are ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you've loved this tutorial. Coming up on the screen right now are some more tutorials that I think you're going to love. There are lots of free videos and tutorials on my channel, as well as lots of bag making tips and tricks that you can find there too. I'll see you on the next video.